So I'm sitting down here today with Matt Laurier, VP of Howard Building Corporation. I wanted to sit you down today and just ask you a couple of questions about some of the challenges that we face um, as an industry and just pick your brain a little bit. So what has the, uh, the COVID experience been like as part of the HBC management team? Yeah, I, you know, it's absolutely been a roller coaster, um, but it's also been a story of resilience as well. I mean, not only for HBC, but you know, for the community at large. Uh, the construction industry. When I look back and look at the last year, you know, there was only one day, you know, from March 16th, 2020 to now that we shut down our job sites to really figure out what was going on. Um, we were continually getting updates, whether it was from the city, the county, the state on measures that we need to put in place to keep things moving forward. It's really, I think, a story about um, resilience, you know, specifically our, our superintendents, uh, our subcontractor, the tradesmen, uh, I think are the real unsung heroes in this. They were put in a spot where uh, we had to change the idea of PPEs. Uh, we had to have discussions about disinfecting sites. Um, we had to change crew sizes. We had to talk about social distancing. Uh, we had to look at different hours that we were working. And those guys really adapted to every step of it. Um, they, they accepted the new norm. They put measures in place and rolled forward. And uh, we're a great testament, I think, to the resilience of not only our subcontractors, but I'll say the construction industry as a whole. What are some of the challenges that the uh, industry has faced during COVID and how did HBC overcome them? In 2019, we had a real good backlog of work, and Q1 of 2020 was really looking positive as well. Uh, and then when March hit, it was a strong pivot in some respects. Um, projects that were already in place um, continued to move forward, but people were questioning what the market was. So um, demand was still there, but volume had changed. Uh, but with that, uh, we started dealing with really the impacts of, I'll say, the macroeconomics of it, which is, you know, the manufacturers and what they were going through, their shutdowns, uh, their employee reductions, uh, how they were dealing with uh, other issues that were as the supply side of the construction industry. Um, how are we getting materials? How long is it taking to produce them? What's the status of shipping? Um, what's going on with container shortages? Uh, all of those components really impacted how our day worked, um, how that outlook um, was to not only the contractors, but really to our clients. Yeah, you know, I heard on a webinar and I thought it was a, a brilliant tip that everything that we're seeing right now it just simply was an accelerator. Yeah, all of those components were already in place. I mean, there there had been a, an ongoing dialogue, you know, even as it related to labor shortages and skilled labors pre-pandemic, um, you know, and, and we had to deal with kind of what this new picture looked like and really adjust to the time. So for HBC, I think how we pivoted was really changing our dialogue, um, not only internally, but externally. Um, yeah. The types of communication we're having with our client and how do we paint a picture because at the end of the day we're their advisors uh, we're trying to make sure that we're painting a timely accurate picture that allows them to make a good business decision um, we all adjusted to a different set of technology and tools um, uh, video conferencing and that environment was the exception not the rule uh, pre-pandemic uh, those were usually only used when there was a client out of state or out of country, and that became the norm. You know, trying to figure out a new set of rules to a virtual environment. Find and the best camera angles. Yes. We all worked on that. Your, what's the virtual <laughs> background you're using, and, and how are you putting it up, and how's the lighting at your house, and make sure you're muting it when the dogs and gardeners and kids are running past. Yeah. Uh, so we had to adjust to all of that. Um, you know, and I think in general, really, everyone did well. Uh, positive and negatives for you on the COVID experience? The negatives were definitely not the one-on-one -on -one interactions. Um, the construction industry is really 
based on building a strong team. That's the positive also. Uh, we really did adapt. Um, we kind of looked at the situation and said, how do we make sure that we maintain our stewardship of our clients' projects? You know, how do we continue to move forward? We've talked about this with, with clients and, and different team members. Um, I think it gave us a perspective that was lost. We were present in our houses. Uh, our children were seeing us more. Uh, you know, I tritely was always telling people that I'm a weekend father at times. You know, my, my kids know that Monday through Friday, uh, you know, I'm dedicated to work and Saturday and Sunday I'm dedicated to them. Um, them seeing me every day definitely had an impact on how we operate, you know, even, you know, I'll say the grace that we give each other as clients, uh, and, and partners in projects where, you know, the awkward moments on zoom where the kids running up and saying, you know, mommy, daddy, you know, and <laughs> we have lives outside of work. we're seeing this <laughs> other side, you know, to our, 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 our partners in these projects that I think we wouldn't have seen if we weren't in this environment. All right. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Everybody wants to know what are the current challenges that the construction industry is facing as a whole in real estate industry, quite frankly? I mean, we've, we've, we've been talking about and dealing with the changes as they've come up, but um, all indicators are still that there's still volatility in the steel stud market, and uh, we still have seen prices increase on copper and steel. Um, We've been going through an evolutionary saga with wood that would hit all time <laughs> record highs and now it's starting to come down. Um, we're now talking also about chip shortages and how that's impacting consumer goods. Um, and ultimately those things are still evolving. Um, while demand seems like um, it is picking up and, and there are jobs that are now uh, starting to pick up and leasing activity that's also picking up. Yeah. Um, you know, returning back to normal is not going to be, you know, a week's or a couple months. It's going to go into the end of this year and, and into 2022 before we figure out really what the new norm is. Um, but we still have to really watch closely with uh, those pricing matrices. Um, you know, steel studs, you know, has been a hot topic of, of conversation where since last October it's gone up, you know, 200%. So really the partnership between subcontractor to GC and GC to owner uh, is really critical at this point. It's Arctic as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things that's worrisome for me that I'm looking at the picture as a whole is um, tenants have um, kicked the bucket down the road. Yeah. They weren't sure what was going to happen um, in 2020 and their lease is expiring. Mm -hmm. They've now done extensions, but now you yeah. still have yeah. leases that are expiring that were already going to expire in 2021. It's, it's been a compounded situation, all with having um, a price increase in materials and shortages. I mean, you name it. So, yeah. 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 I mean, through this, through these you know, months that we've been going through this, uh, some companies have reduced in size where they're, they've right sized and say, okay, between working remotely and working in an office environment, here's the square footage we need. We've seen other market sectors. Um, because of consumer changes, whether it's streaming content or gaming, uh, that really have increased. They've come back and said, we need more square footage uh, because they're in growth mode. So there's not kind of one story that paints a broad swath over everything. Yeah. Um, there really is kind of several stories within uh, the market that we're all kind of adjusting and trying to support um, going forward. But I see that it'll be end of 2021 going into 2022 that we'll see things uh, kind of start to taper off and maybe be at full swing by the end of 2022. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. Thank and, you. Thank uh, you much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.